Hi, and welcome back to another episode of The Public Law with Bo and Tammy, right here on TammyPepperman.org, as heard on No Borders Radio, at NoBordersRadio.co.uk. How are you, Bo? Okay, how are you? Great. It's been a, a day. Holy moly moly moly. I think we're in the apocalypse. Well, yeah, which just means pretty much the revealing, right? Of all things. Of all things. Of course, big story today is Governor Rick Perry indicted on two felony charges. Of course, uh, it's more than just uh, what meets the eye there in the mainstream media because he's also traded on Dun & Bradstreet as the Department of Health and Human Services. Which stemmed out of the Office of Population Affairs in 1975. And of course, that was created by Dr. Henry Kissinger in 1974 with Memorandum 200 to the National Security Council, maintaining that depopulation should be the highest priority of all foreign policy. So, yeah, according to CNN here, uh, grand jury has indicted Texas Governor Rick Perry, a potential 2016 presidential candidate, saying he abused his power by trying to pressure a district attorney to resign. Because he didn't want anybody investigating the corrupt activity of himself. And we just watched that with uh, Governor Cuomo as well in uh, New York. Right, right. He sent out a subpoena for a firm, and he says, well, I want to know about all the corruption that you got going on. And dead nabbit, a minute later, he found out it was his own firm. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some uh, corrupt, corrupt, corrupt activity going on here. Yeah, well, it's always been going on. It's just now festering to the surface because of the turning over to the public law that we've been trying to tell you people about. Trying to tell you here, for all you common law advocates, for all you commercial advocates, all the advocates of code pleading and all the rest of that law merchant crap. How's that working out for you? The two felony counts against Perry, a Republican, stem from his threat to veto funding for a statewide public integrity unit run by Travis County District Attorney Rosemary Lemberg unless she stepped down. The special prosecutor in the case, Michael McRum, said. Right. With her investigating, he probably couldn't buy her off, and so he just decided that uh, he'd force her to resign instead because he couldn't buy her off, which is um, the action of criminal coercion. Perry... Attorney David L. Botsford called the indictment a political abuse of the court system. Yeah, that attorney is already charged with contempt of court, according to the 1832 Nullification Proclamation, as he's arguing statute and legislation rather than the evidence. Uh, he said the action violated the separation of powers and sets a dangerous precedent by allowing a grand jury to punish the exercise of a lawful and constitutional authority afforded to the Texas governor. He doesn't have any authority under the public law. The public law supersedes any and all authority that was previously granted, given, um, given as a privilege perhaps, any of those things due to the violation of the public law of human trafficking and genocide, which is really the only public law that Thou shall not harm a citizen, that kind of thing. Yeah, I think this attorney is also saying that, uh, yeah, uh, this is getting kind of dangerous for me here. Uh, uh, let's see here. Song and a dance. Let's see. How can I uh, sidestep the issue? Uh, you know, I mean, how do I squirm? Uh, out of accountability here myself here. Uh, right, but he's practicing law, which is unlawful on its face under the public law. You know, he's not protecting a human being. He's protecting an industry. We've gotten away with all their, 
you know, corruption for centuries now. And it's time for some comeuppance here. So this is a good story here about Perry. This is just really not the tip of the iceberg. We're getting into the meat now. Yeah, it gets better. This is Perry's Independence Day. Says uh, CNN affiliate KVUE reported that Perry will have to report to the Travis County Jail in the capital of Austin to be booked, fingerprinted, and have his photo made for a mugshot. I have a feeling he's been trying to smuggle things. I don't have any evidence, but uh, to be on the safe side, I believe that all attorneys should be uh, searched uh, very efficiently, and perhaps we should hire some of those from, uh, where was that, New Mexico, where they were raping people? Check them out for Ebola, too. They've been known to hang with the general counsel. Absolutely. Everything you need to do is funded and whatever else. Do whatever to, whatever's necessary to ensure the well-being of humankind. Let's see here. It goes on to say Perry can continue to serve as governor while under indictment, KVUE reported. His attorney could seek to have the charges thrown out. Motion that would delay the case, at the very least. The grand jury in Travis County indicted the governor on charges of coercion of a public servant and abuse of his official capacity. Absolutely. He has no authority to stop an investigation into himself. That's like handing over the, 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 the keys to Charles Manson and saying, okay, let me know if you're guilty of murdering Shannon Tate and, you know, We'll go with your decision. Yeah. So, we're going to have to watch that, uh, see, what, see what comes of it, but uh, it's it's a hot one. It's getting hot out there. Barabas is in the shoot. And, yeah, maybe uh, y'all won't put Jesus on the cross this time and put Barabbas who belongs there on the cross. Kind of looks like it's heading that way. I saw several stories come through today um, back to back. I mean it was like it's a flood of them. I don't know if we're going to be able to take care of them all but uh, what do you got on your board? Um, let's see here. Nothing at the moment. Um, you know uh, we've got uh, Plenty of stuff to talk about. Yeah, I just got to get to it. Um, and we'll go to the homepage on CNN and see what's breaking, see what else is breaking there. Of course, that has been breaking up uh, in all of the Browders outlets. Browder's just covering some stuff today, too. It's very interesting. I know they're on my board, but I don't want to keep clicking all over the place. Uh... All over the media, they're comparing uh, Perry to Andrew Cuomo. He just did the same thing. You know, this is just, it's very interesting that in the past they got away with these things. But uh, the media is sure picking up on this criminal activity, which is so amazing to see. The mainstream media is carrying all of these things and, and making sure that, you know, humanity is safe. That was its original purpose. And, uh, you know, it wasn't here to promote consensus reality and all these things or that was what it's sold as originally anyway. I mean you go back all the way to Plato and others and they, they were promoting some propaganda and the Republic and the apology and Yeah, you're gonna have to give me a minute here to get some stories um lined up. I think I've got nope. a couple on my board. Now we talked about uh, Europe is in a rolling depression. Absolutely. I saw that earlier today. It was interesting to see um, apparently their spending habits are, are uh, the, the uh, way out, outside of their uh, ability or the, um, their eyes were bigger than their stomach, I think is the... Uh, Iraq's most dangerous dam is still operating under ISIS. Um, this is being reported all over. Um, Michelle says the Bali's are at it again. Uh, 
course, we covered Rick Perry. Ex-cop who burned body again gets 17 years. This one was very interesting to see come down the pike out of the AP, the Associated Press, because this one involves um, the actions of several officers and agencies during the Katrina disaster. Finally, that we're seeing accountability for what occurred during those times, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, and they're only exposing the tip of the iceberg there in, in the mainstream. They recently got the mayor, not even a month and a half ago or two months ago, uh, Ray Nagin. Uh, he was finally sentenced, and now here's another officer that had been involved in the slaughter of human beings uh, during the disaster. I mean, during a crisis, that's a... That's the least thing in, in anybody's thought is to be killed by, you know, the local corporate council when everybody's in a state of, of panic. But uh, it was evidence during the Katrina disaster crisis that that was indeed what corporate council was doing. Often people, and we want to see more charges against corporate council for these things and, you know, anybody involved in, in such uh, egregious, abhorrent behavior. Well, of course, everybody's heard by now about Robin Williams. I know I covered that Wednesday. You covered it again yesterday. And the, uh, the thing that nobody's talking about, though, is how he was completely destroyed by court process with two divorces. Uh, possibly looking at a third here because he wasn't sleeping with uh, this woman he was married to. Uh, this kind of thing goes on in the family courts. We see it time in and time again. And uh, the more you got, the more they just bleed out of you. And yeah, you a lot of money. But, you know, he had millions of alimony payments. Right. And, and these suicides, too, it may not have been a suicide. I mean, the rate of um, the ex-wife or soon-to-be ex-wife killing males... Right now in the United States Incorporated alone, uh, and this has held steady for the last 10 years or so, there's a 35,000 male suicide rate per year that is very, very extremely questionable. Normally the, the ex or soon-to-be wife is uh, ex-wife is, is present during the quote suicide or talks about the suicide or makes up reasons for the suicide. And, and those things are always uh, indication that possibly this is not a suicide uh, because of the probability. I mean, he, he the benefits to um, a wife versus an ex-wife are, are extremely, uh, you know, uh, limited when you're an ex-wife. You, you see what I mean? Because they weren't sleeping together, and what if he did threaten divorce or something, and then all of a sudden he finds himself whacked? Because as a wife, still, if she's not divorced, she doesn't, she gets everything. But if they would have gotten a divorce, she would have just gotten half of everything. And and you want to look at the motivation of all of these things, and and to see the newest uh, media, it says he's depressed. It says, and there's pictures that show he's depressed, like. As if somebody was posturing to sell the idea of suicide. You know, those things are, are very, very, um, they, they raise a lot of red flags with me. Yeah, and me too. Uh, either way, you know, we missed and he was loved by many as we see all the numerous stories this week in the mainstream about him but um, let's see speaking of deaths and that decorated marine sniper the one that uh, famously urinated on the Taliban corpses mm -hmm. was found dead by his wife after wow. he switched medications for injuries sustained from a uh, roadside bomb Wow. or marine marine Robert Richards 28 was reportedly found dead by his wife, Rachel, at their Jacksonville home on Wednesday night. Prince said that it does not appear he committed suicide. Investigations are underway to determine what medication he was taking. He was on medication for his injuries. He suffered in a near-deadly roadside bomb in Afghanistan. Shrapnel went through his throat, and he nearly lost a foot. He was one of 
those four Marines that were filmed uh, urinating on the uh, dead Taliban troops in 2011 that went viral. Right. Yeah, you don't know. I wonder if he was on that oxy oxycontin or oxycodone. It doesn't say what kind of pain medication he was on, but the majority of pain medications that I've ever seen, all of them, indeed, um, cause you know the body to shut down. So it's it, you know it's go either way. But um, from that report, it, there's indication that he may have possibly been killed by the prescription medication alone. Yeah, it doesn't say what kind of medication here. So, don't know. Mystery. Uh, interesting, though. Lots of uh, stuff that, co that, of course, came from the Mail Online, but there's a lot of stories. And uh, I kind of like the Mail on Online lately. Uh, a lot of thought provoking stories if nothing else uh, breaking news couple arrested for kidnapping two Amish girls from roadside stall and holding them captive overnight that was terrifying I was reading that yesterday and um, it sounds like a, a, an agent for the national state now these children they're just Amish children they're not exposed to media they're not exposed to um, uh, Twitter they're not exposed to electricity and all of a sudden they're kidnapped and their parents are forced to call 911 and expose themselves to media, to law enforcement, to all of these things. And, and very often you'll find that that is the reason that, that children are kidnapped and return later. It is to promote fear in the populace so then the reliance on the state occurs. So I really want to watch this one to make sure... Um, this is rectified because um, when they do things like that, like they're doing in Syria right now, Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, Russia, Ukraine, um, everywhere, that's what they're doing on the ground. They kidnap children, they kill children, and then they point the finger at the, the others. It was the Sunnis, it was the Shiites. No, it wasn't. It was the CIA, it was the FBI, and what they're doing is promoting government by killing you and your children and blaming your brothers and sisters. It's the oldest trick in the book. It's the Hegelian dialectic. Absolutely. Always trying to rustle you back into, uh, uh, you know, your patriotism to the, the state, the federal state, the confederacy, whatever you want to call it. The ones that are causing all the pain in the first place. But you don't know that because of the way it's presented to you. And in the end, they coerce you back into patronizing them, whether you realize it or not. Oh, I hate government. I'm going to go file a petition. Right. And then your daughter or your son disappears, and you have to call government. But it was them who kidnapped them. It, it was a, it's a promotional tactic, uh, a marketing scheme to sell government. When government steals your children, then government sells them back to you by court process or rents them out by court process or sells them to each other by court process. That, that's not good. We don't want any of these presentations, and, and these agents need to be held accountable for these things, as well as their directors. And I am so thankful to see Rick Perry up on the block now because this is the start of a very, very beautiful thing. Absolutely. Um, so, speaking of the uh, suicide incident, I guess, um, Gene Simmons, bass player for the so-called rock band KISS, which stands for Knights and Satanic Service, by the way, uh, have some dignity and jump, he says. Outrage as Gene Simmons advises people suffering from depression and drug addiction to commit suicide. Yeah, he doesn't like useless bread gobblers. Of course not. So of course he needs to go to North Korea. He's on record as calling uh, everybody else goyim to serve uh, at his pleasure on his talk on his famous uh, TV show. Right, he needs to be in North Korea because they, they like that kind of thing there. Yeah, yeah. A good I, environment, good habitat for Gene Simmons. Right. 
Yeah, I don't know about their music going over too well in North Korea, but well, they'll find other. You can find other jobs there. Right. Got a great ski resort. Yep. Uh, he says. Um, let's see. Um, uh, for people whose mental health issues keep them for uh, rock and rolling all night and partying every day, you should kill yourself. Oh my goodness. He sounds like Ernst Rudin himself. Uh, back at Nazi Germany, the psychiatrist said the same thing. Yeah, I mean, and going by the mainstream media story, Robin Williams uh, killing himself, well, okay, it's not too odd of line with what we see in the typical court process. He had a diagnosis. He had uh, a counselor, right. psychiatrist he was seeing. Right. And Gene Simmons here, he's promoting psychiatry. He's promoting genocide within the action of genocide. He's, he's segregating. He's uh, classifying. He's dehumanizing. Dehumanizing, which is one of the eight stages of genocide. And in this, uh, Mr. Simmons needs to be held accountable. Yeah, absolutely. German spy agency recorded Hillary Clinton's private conversation on a plane while she was U.S. Secretary of State. There's no such thing as secret spying of a public servant ever. Right. The headline's a bit of a deception. Clinton's words were intercepted while she was on a U.S. government plane. German newspapers reported that government sources have claimed the conversation was picked up by accident. It doesn't matter. If, if she's evidence to have committed a crime, she needs to be held accountable. There's no privacy when they're no. presenting the illusion of being a public figure. She's already indicted by her own actions as Secretary of State. Right. And, and if she's trying to hide evidence of her criminal activity that's tampering with witnesses, tampering with evidence, and other things related to tampering, and, and especially in the um, court of public opinion, through the media, she's tampering with the jurors themselves, because the media is, is there to show humanity what's going on, and, and nothing more, and, and, you know, trying to hide evidence is not going to work for her anymore, that's a, absolutely in violation of the public law. Especially in her capacity as Secretary of State or the Clearing House discharging congressional bankruptcy. How dare she? Yeah, no kidding. I mean, that's what, what I meant by that, indicting herself as Secretary of State. She was in charge of the books, clearing the books for all the human trafficking going on in 28 U.S.C. 453. Absolutely. And she's one of the ones, and, and now it's John Kerry, that requires, such as Gene Simmons, promoting genocide. Oh, yeah, yeah. These, he's an actor. You have to remember that Gene Simmons is also an actor. And, okay, politicians are actors. Right. Acts of Congress. Those are acts. Scripts. Script writing. Playwriting. Yeah. Yep, let's see here. Uh, of course, um, we still have this big fiasco in Ferguson, Missouri. Yeah, I saw that. Now, State Patrol has stepped in, and they've been protesting along with the citizens. I mean, they're not going to tolerate the uh, FBI and the attorney behind the scenes. And we're watching this unfold to find out what's, what's you know, going to come of it. But it looks... Um, as if the, the um, citizens are, you know, don't get too friendly with any law enforcement, of course. Don't, don't uh, maintain a reliance or a codependency because you're the authority. But law enforcement is to be working on behalf of humanity, not the reverse. Yeah, now, allegedly, he was a suspect in a burglary that had happened. Now, the identity is still in dispute, whether that's him or not, but this officer had no idea. Right. He said he had absolutely no idea that the young 18-year-old boy was involved in a robbery when he shot him. And so there's absolutely no indication that there was fear other than what corporate counsel promoted 
to the officer and we know all about dispatch and corporate counsel and this officer uh, surprisingly he's called dispatch and usually dispatch deals with the psychiatrist behind the scenes uh, they're right hand in hand with corporate counsel and, and it's likely that this dispatch is is the fall guy for something that corporate counsel called out but uh, we're still out on that as of this time um, I do want the calls that had come in and everything yeah Surprising, well, surprisingly they have um, in-car cameras but they weren't installed yeah yeah that's the whole thing uh, they say they don't have the money to install these cameras that they already have. But they had enough money to do what they just did, militarize force against the citizenry. Yeah, paying all this overtime to law enforcement, all this equipment. Uh, LRAD, which is capable of 149 dB uh, output, 130 dBs is damaging to your ears. So how they call that and get away with calling that a, a non-lethal crowd disport, disbursement mechanism uh, when it can potentially, uh, you cause know, wreck deafness, your hearing. Right, cause deafness, and that is harm against a human being. And uh, again, um, you know, we're getting to the bottom of it, and it, you know, it looks a lot like they're turning on each other, and I'm, you know, we don't want uh, collateral damage of any kind. Well, we got to go back to this one here because... Um, this just come up on my radar here. Uh, the challenger to Governor Andrew Cuomo in New York's upcoming primary election was arrested, handcuffed, and jailed Thursday for video recording two plainclothes police officers aggressively arresting a man. Only days after the NYPD issued a memo to officers stating recording is allowed. Right. This is Governor Cuomo there ordering law enforcement around. And Governor Cuomo needs to be arrested for obstructing officers. Randy Credico, the challenger to Governor Andrew Cuomo in New York's upcoming primary election, was arrested, handcuffed, and jailed Thursday for uh, video recording two plainclothes police officers aggressively arresting a man. Right. Cuomo okay. had him arrested. All right. I'm, I'm reiterating, I guess, because that's the way the story read, but the critical began recording video on his cell phone after witnessing two men without badges aggressively stopping an older black man at the Van Cortland Park subway station in the Bronx. Critico, who has spoken out against New York City's stop and frisk policy, was on his way to a campaign interview when he saw the older gentleman being arrested. Guy got right into my face and says, you've got to move back. Critical told radio host Fred Digger. The, uh, while in holding cell in the Bronx, the next thing you know, I got arrested. Yep. Sick. Cuomo had him arrested to take him out of the running. Sure. And uh, what about these officers, Mr. Cuomo? Assaulting human beings at you and your cronies' directives. You know, that's absolutely in violation of the public law. Critical was charged with menacing a police officer, obstructing government administration, resisting arrest, and disorderly conduct. According to Critical's friend, attorney Margaret Ratner, Kunstler, I like Ratner. that. They put their middle name in there, uh, yeah. Ratner. Yeah. Uh, the police tightened Randy's handcuffs to the point where his hands went numb. And they do that all the time. They yeah, torture they human to beings when they time. arrest them. Yeah, they could do that to Rocco one time. And under the directives of attorneys. Right, corporate counsel. Now, this is my friend, your face, folks. Who's, but who's recording? Who's, but who's taking the fall on most of this stuff? You cops? Yep. Adhering to these private acts and acts of commerce? Yep. You're not immune here. No. You're not. The letter mark and reprisal? Uh, you think it's a constitutional right for you? It's uh, unlawful on its face. Absolutely. Who's reporting that? Uh, this comes from ORAS.com, but the main story goes to um, uh, photographyisnotacrime.com. Interesting. Yes. But they were trying to roll over on the officers at photography.com. 
and um, of course they're being directive and uh, we conclude I mean the evidence is speaking for itself here you know you have a competitor to Mr. Cuomo and the competitor has happens to witness things that Cuomo's directing and then the competitor happens to get arrested and Cuomo's outside the loop but he's right there directing it's interesting Critico is a former comedian it says who once appeared on the Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson and former director of the William Moses Kunstler Fund for Racial Justice has been a frequent public critic of the police of course he is, because, yeah. yeah, don't pay attention to the attorneys directing the cops or anything right. like that. Yeah. Attacking the NYPD stop and frisk policies and frequent racial profiling. Yeah, they're trained to. That's their policy. Uh, years ago, Cordico started a project in Harlem that provided locals with cameras to halt the use of police violence against innocent civilians. Uh, Cordico has also championed the legalization of marijuana as part of his campaign to claim... Of course, uh, I've been it claims a smoke policy in violation of laws, uh, a political tactic. And, and that's again, it, it cuts into the attorney's profit if 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 uh, uh, marijuana is lawful versus legal. So he's promoting all of these attorney's products. He's a walking commercial. My goodness. Perhaps the latest incident of New York Police Department's misbehavior, combined with the uh, well-deserved out rage over the NYPD's recent murder of a man for allegedly selling loose cigarettes will awaken New York voters to gift wrap candidate uh, to a gift wrap ca candidate that might truly change things in the city. Well, none of these guys are really going to change anything. They're going to have a different viewpoint uh, that uh, basically leads you down to the same road to Rome. Right, and just get rid of all of them. Uh, let law enforcement enforce the law, which is a public law, protect humanity, and get rid of the rest. That's what I would say. And the attorneys need to all be put into Gitmo and waterboarded for a while. They said it was lawful. They said that it was legal to waterboard people. I'm not being mean to all of our listeners. Um, attorneys said it was legal to waterboard people. And, uh, you know... Whatever they say goes, uh, according to the 1941 Atlantic Charter. Whatever they've been practicing comes back around on them. I didn't make those things legal. Uh, let's see here. Um, it says Ferguson steps back from the brink. Now Highway Patrol HUG protesters after taking the police and... Um, Taking over policing and peace finally comes to troubled town after four nights of riots over Michael Brown shooting. Right. A uh, dramatic shift came after oversight with to Highway Patrol stripping local police of their authority after four days of clashes with crowds protesting the death of 18-year-old Michael Brown. Right. Uh, and another headline here, the police are inciting violence all over again. Michael Brown's family uh, attacked cops after they say he robbed store, but also admitted officer did not know that when he shot him. Now, there's no definitive uh, answer whether or not that was actually Brown on, on the video or not. And, and don't let it affect your thinking because by saying that somebody's a criminal in some way to justify their death is another form of dehumanization, desensitizing humanity to allow the death of their brothers and sisters um, simply based on an allegation and again, you know, burglary, robbery, those things is when there's no harm upon a human being, there's no relative uh, equal measure and um, there's no excuse for murder and, and again the officer did not know of those things however the officer was directed by corporate counsel and I want to see corporate counsel held accountable for these things yeah the eyewitness says that he was shot execution style right. multiple times his hands in the air 
Okay, this is a murder. I don't care if you got a costume on that makes you look like a law enforcement officer. If you're shooting people, you are violating the public law. Right, unless they're a threat or harm immediate right now. Not a uh, threat, you know, what if, just in case. Uh, in order to uh, be under the public law, you have to be protecting a human being uh, by getting rid of another human being or or um, psychopath. It, it's not uh, it's not rocket science. If uh, corporate counsel tells you that you're in danger when you're not in danger, and uh, a human being gets murdered based on those directives, corporate counsel needs to be arrested immediately and put into a holding facility where they're not a threat to human beings any longer. RT's reporting a false flag uh, from RT.com. False flag Kurds clash with Gaza protesters in UK after ISIS banner mix-up. This is regarding the story that came out earlier today. Um, they were reporting that the Kurds were clashing, but this one is being reported now as a false flag. Police arrested two men after a brawl broke out at a Gaza demonstration in Sheffield when members of the Kurdish community mistook a black flag held by protesters for the banner of ISIS. South Yorkshire police said a group of demonstrators were holding a Palestinian flag bearing a declaration of the Islamic faith. Clashes occurred at Sunday's protest after Kurdish residents mistook the flag for the Islamic State banner. Police interviewed when members of the city's Kurdish community approached the demonstrators and tore up the flag, intervened, sorry, police intervened when members of the city's Kurdish community approached the demonstrators and tore up the flag, provoking the brawl. Witnesses believe the two men arrested were Kurdish. It was very interesting to see uh, brawls breaking out, brother against brother, based on heraldry. That's sad and, and so uh, far outside of humanity. Stop looking at a flag and protecting a flag, uh, protecting color over your brothers and sisters, for goodness sake. Let's see here. ACLU of Missouri. Success. We have agreement for public to record police. Ah, well... Isn't that nice of these attorneys to yeah. to give us these rights? Yeah. It goes back to that constitutional thing. Everyone says, well, I got my sovereignty from that constitution. No. Okay. Well, let's see, Mr. Uh, constitutionalist. Whatever gave them the authority to take your rights from you in the first place? Just sell them back because to you. Because you gave it. You gave it to him. You consented because you're too weak-minded to see what's really going on. Right. Absolute codependency, parenting, parenting, and um, of course this is exhibiting and evidencing uh, nothing short that of the one who is a constitutionalist or a constitutional theorist is an infant in need of protection, and that's the whole purpose of everything that everybody sees that is going on, is that you all are being picked up as infants lost at sea. So we've got to stop doing these things and believing in constitutional theory and believing all of these um, crap uh, attorneys and the voices and the tongues and, and um, take a look around at yourself and what's going on here because you are the authority. Um, law enforcement is to be enforcing the public law, which means do no harm. They're not to be enforcing corporate policy. Uh, and uh, acts of commerce and private acts, uh, and, and of course, practicing law, shuffling uh, evidence off the court record, uh, shuffling evidence out of existence of their criminal activities and behaviors. Um, you know, sadly, these attorneys, you know, and, th and this week, uh, you had reported on the Bone Rocco show that um, the uh, main entities that are afflicted with Ebola are those lacking the frontal lobe, and, and they were also considered um, as primates. And that's what we're dealing with, folks. They have no impulse control. Uh, these psychopaths are absolutely uh, without empathy, without compassion. 
and they're able to view a human being as an object by which to traffic it. And that, that's what we're dealing with. Bottom line, you're not dealing with somebody who's like smarter than you. You're not dealing with anybody who's more intellectual than you are. You're dealing with a psychopath that's very cunning, that uses the law as a, as a tool. A to, weapon. Yeah, a weapon. And um, it, this is defined, by the way, as lawfare. And, um, you know, they, they don't ever assume that attorneys have any kind of authority. They're only psychopaths, and uh, they have very smooth tongues, and they sound great, but uh, they're not great. They have absolutely uh, no humanity whatsoever. Hillary the movie, speaking of psychopaths, Hillary Clinton exposed, and it was banned from TV by courts. Of course. 2008, a movie by Citizens United that chronicles the history of greed, corruption, and cover-up of Hillary Clinton. What's more unbelievable, Hillary's nefarious exploits or the media's cover-up of them. This movie was banned from TV. Lest we be accused of taking sides within the meanings or the meaningless two-party system. See the documentary, uh, Koch Brothers Exposed. Uh, Koch Brothers provide much of the funding for Citizens United for more on the Clintons, see Clinton's Chronicles. Right, they're all bad. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's like, uh, you know, good Congress versus bad Congress right. here. Right, but the thing is, is that they're vilifying the media when in the headline itself, the evidence says that the judges ordered that this is not to play on television. So the media's hands are tied because of those orders. You know, yeah. They're just following orders. So you can't, uh, you know, go after the media for what's been done. You go after their directors and the judges that are ordering these gigs and, and everything else. And again, when a judge orders that evidence is suppressed, that means the judge is tampering with evidence. It's yeah. also tampering with a juror when it's suppressing evidence and the exposure of it to humanity because human beings are the only judge. Of course, they made it all legal and part of their court process and court procedure to shuffle this information off the court record since 1938. Star diseases has been in effect. And uh, it's just a product of the attorneys. Uh, Wanting to safeguard the truth. The attorneys hate the truth. Absolutely. They like to litigate over lies. Absolutely. That one, he felt surrounded. What was he saying? Um, it's preposterous. It's preposterous. And he felt Summers. so surrounded by the truth. He, he couldn't wiggle out of it, so it made him feel so bad he wanted to crawl out of his skin. Yeah. Uh, of course, over at TheAtlantic.com, did you cover this story? You said something about TheAtlantic.com here a little while ago, but the law school scam? That, that was story? beautiful. I would love to hear you read that one because that was something that I never expected to see. Um, you know, attorneys are getting ticked off because they're not making now what they were promised. And um, it, it's interesting to come across that story and uh, to see what uh, went on and uh, I think I don't know these are interesting days Bo well here I'll read some of it it's actually longer than I want, want to read here but um, the um, yeah of course the uh, headline is uh, the law school scam for-profit law schools are a capitalist dream of privatized profits and socialized losses, but for their debt-saddled, no-job prospect graduates, they can be a nightmare. Yeah, it sounds like attorneys are falling on hard times. Yeah, yeah, well... It's the apocalypse. I, I'm telling you, this is the apocalypse. Did you ever imagine that Satan would be held accountable in your lifetime? No. No, but uh, it's high time. See, David Fract isn't easily intimidated by, by public speaking assignments. A lieutenant colonel in the Air Force Reserve and a defense attorney, Fract is best known for securing the 2009 release of the teenage Guantanamo detainee 
Muhammad Jawad. He did so by helping to convince a military tribunal that the only evidence that Jawad had purportedly thrown a hand grenade at a passing American convoy in 2002 had been extracted by torture. So here we were talking about uh, torture right off the bat. Let's right. see here. And if there's no evidence, then there's no evidence. And an attorney should not be practicing law. If your client was innocent, then there's no evidence. An equitable estoppel would suffice, but you never did that. You chose to go towards that golden light, and you sold your clients down the river by which to profit off of human trafficking and genocide. And this is evidence of human trafficking. When you argue anything in court and take money, that is human trafficking. Well, let's see here. By comparison, Frack's presentation in April to the Florida Coastal School of Law faculty and staff seemed to pose a far less daunting challenge. A law professor for several years, Frack was a finalist for the school's deanship, and the highlight of his two-day visit was this hour-long talk in which he discussed his ideas for fixing what he saw as the major problems facing the school. Sharply declining enrollment, drastically reduced admission standards, and low morale among employees. Right, they're being held accountable now. Yeah, so it's, it's an ex exposing article. I mean, and we talked about how uh, the uh, law school uh, Enrollment's been down. Uh, attorneys are uh, um, committing suicide in uh, record numbers. Uh, let's see. I mean, this is uh, just Ireland. more. This is just more uh, mantra for the same uh, situation these attorneys are finding themselves in now under the public law. Right. Robert would say it's expensive. Yeah, very expensive. Very expensive. So. Midway through Frack statistics, uh, filled PowerPoint presentation, he was interrupted when Dennis Stone, the school's president, entered the room. Stone had been alerted to Frack's comments by emails and texts from faculty members in the room. Stone told Frack to stop insulting the faculty and ask him to leave. Oh, Stop. that's funny. They were informants, texting informants. Oh my gosh! Of course. It's, informants took on a technical, technological edge. Ah. Startled, Frack requested that anyone in the room who felt insulted raise his or her hand. When no one did, he attempted to resume his presentation. But Stone told him that if he didn't leave the premises immediately, security would be called. Frack <laughs> packed up his belongings and left. Oh, no, he's been turned on by his father. Oh, he's been forsaken. Oh, An yeah. Well, he's a bad one, too. An attorney, military, military colonel, attorney. You know, when you're that high up in the military, you're CIA. That's he's just, a bad one. That's just sad. His daddy forsaken him. But, does, but the dean's no better. The no, dean's no, pushing no. the law merchant, too. It's, it's, it's just, I want to be the king of this hill. Right. There has to be a fall guy in every equation, and apparently this guy's a fall guy. Did you see that one where the uh, federal employee today was struck by lightning? Yes. That was interesting. That one was something I, I um, it was very surprising to see because, you know, that. It's very strange. Bible thing about being smited. It sounds like somebody, you know, maybe got on God's bad side or something. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'll have to pull that one up for the details, but uh, I remember uh, seeing that. They were just uh, too close to the truck that was stuck, that was struck. Right. And they were federal employees. I'm sure that didn't help their plight. Let's see. Of course, we lost uh, Lauren Bacall this week. Oh, uh, the lady that played uh, Spock's fiance on the uh, Star Trek series, um, she played uh, 
to bring yeah that's on CNN I can bring that up Leonard Nimoy tweeted about it today uh, she had actually done a lot of roles that were thanks to her um, being high, uh, you know spotlighted in that uh, Star Trek series uh, did you see the garbage that the federal government's been doing uh, the last year, wasting and, and um, giving That's all they do out. is waste money. Oh, come on. But they were giving local municipality bouncy castles, bowling pins, uh, dog goggles, 10 sets of dog goggles with taxpayer dollars. Yeah, that was the Washington Post, right? Right. I want a, I want a, uh, a helmet cam for the Sovereign Cat. If, if those are the rules, heck yeah. The Department of Defense applies a broad definition of military gear when it makes surplus items available to local law enforcement via its excess property program. Now, under the rules of the Treasury, if they have excess property or anything else, it goes back in the Treasury to be distributed to all of humanity. But it hasn't been doing that. In addition to combat vehicles and assault rifles, police departments have obtained everything from karaoke machines to bouncy castles through the Department of Defense program free of charge. Now, what we uncovered yesterday and the media was reporting on is that the Department of Defense has been supplying weaponry to Israel as well. So it's not only... Uh, the American taxpayer dollars that are going to dog goggles and bouncy castles, but you're also paying for this war on Gaza. Oh yeah, that's the whole idea. Get you beat into submission so you can pay for uh, more uh, redistribution and destruction of humanity. Absolutely, that's what the game's been all about according to the federal government for the longest time until now that they're being exposed in the mainstream media. And again, this is on WashingtonPost.com, blogs, uh, work blog, and uh, I, I urge everybody to go read it, the full thing. Um, I love the new layout for Washington Post and the New York Times. Very, very simple, not a lot of loud colors, and not a lot of loud advertisements, which of course, I, I just can't stand it. Um, I want to give a shout out because it's been very, very nice and pleasant to actually read these stories without a bunch of crap. Yeah, with them. I've always enjoyed uh, going to, uh, as much as he's an adversary, Michael Rivera's website, What Really Happened, because he has a lot of, you know, alternative uh, uh, news site links on there. But you have to fight your way through two pop-ups before you can even get to the first story. Right, and that's ridiculous. Um, you know, it, it's nice to see uh, media being, uh, you know, simple for human consumption rather than uh, a platform for advertising politics and, and basically uh, what, what equated years ago to the snake in the garden. The media was it was Jezebel, it was a snake in the garden, it was selling all sorts of concepts and doodads, and now it's actually uh, evidencing the corrupt activity and the um, unlawful uh, Congress and everything else. It's really nice to see, really, really beautiful to see. Venezuelan woman smuggles $120,000 of cocaine to Spain in her fake breast. So what? Another crime against the revenue stream, 27 CFR 72.11. Right. Uh, the government doesn't like competition. Right, and that's just unhealthy. I, I would prefer not to see those things occurring because of the harm that it could cause to herself. Um, just be careful out there, folks. Uh, you know, no, Nobody should have to go through terrorism to do anything on this planet. I mean, I don't uh, advocate... Uh, cocaine use because it is harmful, but you know it's it's not against the public law. Um, the CIA law. sure loved it. They sure uh, made a lot of money uh, on it over the years. Right, and it's so sad because it, these are human beings we're talking about here. Oh, uh, let's see. Shock as two players die at World Chess Tournament in Norway. What the heck? It was an emotional two weeks of defeats. 
forfeits and winning titles, but a major international chess tournament was rocked after the sudden death of two players within hours of each other on the final day. What happened? Were they poisoned or something? Um, let me, I'll have to pull this one up here. I'm reading it off of a, uh, the front page of Daily Mail. But, um, well, chess can be very stressful, but, uh, let's see what happened here. Yeah, that woman with the fake breasts, they were like implants, so it is kind of dangerous. That's a dangerous thing to have to try to put yourself through just to get through customs, and it didn't work anyways because they've got all this money uh, put into these, uh, you know, naked body scanners, uh, thanks to Michael Chertoff. Yeah. You know, putting out uh, tetra waves or something like that that are uh, actually damaging to your DNA. What a lovely thing your government has given to you. Over on the Washington Times.com, photographer scrubs viral photos of Obama dancing during, during Ferguson unrest. A Martha's Vineyard photographer quietly deleted photographs of President Obama dancing during a birthday celebration on the island for Aunt Jordan. Editorial and the fine arts photographer Elizabeth Cecil posted two photos on her Instagram account that showed the president dancing and toasting Mrs. Jordan at the Farm Net Golf Club. The party, which was closed to the press, included about 150 guests, including former President Bill Clinton and his wife Hillary. The Obamas, quote, the Obamas danced nearly every song, a good time was had by all, end quote, Deputy Press Secretary Ed Eric Stoltz said in the statement. Some critics questioned Mr. Obama for the optics of jovial president dancing their night away as police and protesters in Ferguson, Missouri exchanged tear gas and Molotov cocktails. Now, I, I, it's just deplorable. His actions are, are absolutely deplorable. There's, there's nothing lower than you know, somebody who would just sit there and watch something happen in what is supposed to be their country where they're supposed to be protecting humanity, and there was nobody there. Nobody there. He's out dancing, having a good old time, and we've been watching the last few weeks golf and away. He just, he's out of it. He's absolutely out of it. He believes that he's untouchable. The whole federal state is absolutely insane. And, and again, this is evidence of their state of infancy. They, they have no uh, ability to act like adults. Yeah, and after all that uh, controversy between Clinton and him, they were seen together at uh, the vineyards there, uh, laughing it up, yucking it up together. Right, it's just absolutely deplorable. It's always the action of Heigl. Look over there, look over there. Well, they're, they're the ones that are perpetrating so many horrendous things. So, the chess players then, getting back to that, Kurt Meyer, 67, from Switzerland, suffered a heart attack during his final match and later died in the hospital on Thursday. Another player from uh, Uzbekistan was found dead in his hotel room on Thursday night. Norwegian police said they were not treating the deaths as suspicious. That's creepy. I think that they should be treated as suspicious. I mean, that's that's just not a coincidental thing, and and I, I believe that more investigation needs to be considered here. Yeah, it seems like it. I mean, they have all these heart attack machines and lovely things to kill you with that uh, right. and they've come up with uh, with your tax money. Absolutely. Especially in the Netherlands. I mean, they've got, it's horrifying the level of indoctrination, dehumanization, desensitization that has occurred. They've got this eugenics program uh, called Euthanasia there, and it's quite uh, prolific. Well, check this out. The Red Cross was present in the playing hall and quickly undertook emergency first aid until the ambulance arrived but you know they uh, Kurt, Kurt Meyer died yeah another player the other player also died doesn't say anything about any Red Cross involvement with him though interesting yeah well, very, very see. interesting so alright that being said uh, Let's see, military changes hairstyle policy to allow 
corn rolls and braids after a petition was launched against the racially biased rules. Okay, um, so they've changed the hairstyle on that. Um, Right. I, I've never seen any issue. Um, that's just Congress. Years ago, they were pitting males and females. Um, you know, from experience, your 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 ex was, uh, you know, she was a trained killer. It doesn't matter what gender anybody is. Um, and a haircut, it's just fluff. That's just fluff, you know. It's just garbage to worry about, lots of controversy. Um, just sad. That report was from uh, earlier on the federal employee, the postal employee, was from Fort Lauderdale. Um, do you want me to go through that one? I finally found it. Um, it was from the weather.com earlier today. Uh, it's like around 6 p.m. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Postal worker injured by lightning strike. Uh, Fort Lauder po Lauderdale. Whoops. A Fort Lauderdale postal worker was hurt Friday when lightning hit too close to her vehicle. The city tells the Weather Channel she was sitting inside her mail truck on East Commercial Boulevard when the bolt hit close, sending a charge of electricity through the vehicle. She was touching part of the car at the time and sustained burns. Those things are metal like a tin can. Um, I thought they would be grounded because of the rubber tires, but then the metal Well, itself it prevents them from being grounded. But if you're standing outside the vehicle, you're grounded. Right. So, electricity wants to follow the path to ground, so that definitely puts you in harm's way when you're outside of the vehicle. See what I'm saying? And your feet are touching the ground. She said she was, uh, let's see, the city tells, uh, she was sitting inside her mail truck, but she was touching part of the car at the time and sustained burns. That's, that's why, that's why, because wow. uh, if she had been in the car, uh, she would have been safe, but she was outside. She was touching the, the metal on the, on the, from the inside, it says. Okay, well, that's, okay, well, that's why she was only burned, probably, and not, not uh, killed. Right. It's interesting. Paramedics responded and took her to Broward Health with what was described as serious injuries. As weather.com meteorologist Chrissy Warlow explains, if you're in a vehicle during a storm, quote, it's important to hold your ha fold your hands in your lap and avoid touching anything inside the car, end quote. Well, that's strange. I've never heard that before. I thought that they were completely enclosed because of the grounding um, due to the rubber Rubber tires. is an insulator. Rubber prevents uh, electricity from getting the ground. But we're talking about uh, upwards of a million volts in a lightning strike, so... It's going to find all sorts of ways to get the ground. Right. So driving in a car during a lightning storm is not a great idea, basically. Especially if you're a government worker these days, I guess, huh? It's sad. Those... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. These, uh... I mean, it's like hell all of a sudden is, is upon them. You know, all of these things and... Uh, psychopaths are the only ones that can catch a Ebola because of the missing frontal lobe, according to reports recently out of the CDC and other uh, resources. And um, it's just like they're having this horrible, horrible bad day. Yeah, let's see here. Let's cover some uh, Ukraine headlines. Uh, let's see. Uh, had one here just a moment ago. Uh, did Ukraine attack its own tanks? White House can't confirm Russian convoy was destroyed by Kiev. Move to the point. The onus is on Ukraine to present some evidence, in fact any evidence, of a destroyed Russian military convoy instead of merely building upon a story conceived by the two UK media outlets because if Ukraine indeed has no evidence then its story falls apart and what's worse the credibility and reputation of its government of NATO and certainly of the UK press would be in tatters. The US. So what possibility is there? Well one that is all too unpalpable for Ukraine namely that in its ex uh, excitement to blow something up may well have destroyed some of its own military vehicles. Who's reporting that one now? 
Uh, this comes out of Zero Hedge. Yeah, and it, you know, the United States Incorporated is just great at that. Uh, during Nazi Germany, for example, Hitler's the one that burned down the rice tag and blamed everybody else except for himself and the United States Incorporated for that kind of thing and promoting the fear and stuff. And it sounds a lot like the same occurrence. We'll have to follow up with this one, folks, and see where it goes. Speaking of promoting fear, false flag warning, ISIS dispatching terrorists to the United States. Yeah. This comes from One News Junkie blog spot. ISIS but is a corporation ISIS, in Washington, right. D.C. Yeah, and they were created out of that same National Security Act. It was the CIA, Al-Qaeda, uh, KGB, MI5, MI6, Mossad. Yeah, whatever it's called over there. And, and, you know, all of these things, IRA, all of those things were CIA presentations. And, and it says this in the... Four uh, supplementary detailed staff reports on foreign and military intelligence of the Church Committee reports. Yeah, it's it's all the same thing, only different. I mean, you know, if you read that, you'll you'll see exactly how all this stuff works. That's why this stuff is not not surprising to me because they create the intelligence. It says right on page twelve that uh, they became a intelligence production. Uh, court company, and they produce the intelligence for Congress, which has world dominion under the Atlantic Charter, 1941. You know, I had spring forward to 1947 National Security Act. All right, and then of course the yeah, CIA created out of that, and all of these other departments, which you read right in um, section 302 and 303, I believe, that these uh, departments had. Basically, unlimited ability to be created. It, it can expand out forever. Right. And that's what has manifested itself into these other uh, agencies like MI5, MI6, Mossad, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, right. again. Right. It was an embezzlement scam out of the Treasury. You know, if, if there was necessity created by presentation... And they can get money out of the treasury saying, well, we're protecting humankind when it was them producing and harming humankind the entire time. And um, because this was evidence to the treasury and the House of Lords, uh, their commissions are all shut down. They've, they've lost their commission to do these things. And, and um, thankfully, that, that's, uh, it looks like that's what we're seeing in the news. They're actually being held accountable now because, you know, uh, well, they've lost their, their little comfy blankie and their little pacifier. And, and sure enough, as luck would have it, they were not immune. And they didn't have sovereignty. Isn't that the going <coughs> game? Um, I love this that the agents, all of a sudden the agents came back around you this week and they started whining and crying and moaning and you know ranting, trying to cast out right ranting and raving and then you know it, it's like you you want to knock, false allegations right and you, you want to knock on their forehead and say hello are you watching what is happening across the globe right now because it is you and your handlers being held accountable while you're still screaming you're wrong you're wrong but it, it doesn't do anything for you and um, while you're busy being agents and, and raising all sorts of ruckus and, and you're chasing your own tail, your handlers are posturing you to be a fall guy, which is, a, that's the most ironic. These, these agents want to pretend, um, you know, that they've got some kind of intellectual ability, when in reality, they're, they're, they're sitting there like that, um, remember that uh, Family Guy episode where Peter's sitting there on the couch and he's watching television and he's watching his own arrest and laughing his butt off? Here they come, here they come. And, and as he's being arrested, he, he's watching this play out on television and, and laughing about it. And this is like those those same agents that are now back channel with you. And, and um, it's just, it's profound to see because it's, it's bad. They shouldn't be acting like a cartoon. Well, I remember uh, that same scenario in uh, Beavis and Butthead. They were watching Coppers. Yeah. And they're on the TV, and 
being dragged away from the TV. There's like, no, no, wait, we want to see what happens. Right. And it's them getting busted. It, it was probably that that I saw it. Maybe it wasn't Family Guy, but uh, uh, I'll have to look it up later then and we'll, we'll rewatch it. But uh, it's very interesting to watch these agents back channel and, and um, as they, you know, just Ye scream and whine. Yeah, and, well, and, here, uh, here's some writing on the wall for that, too, in a way. Um, Bombshell, 15 Benghazi witnesses killed, unable to testify. Right. Gowdy has promised to uncover the truth surrounding the attacks of their immediate aftermath, uh, and their immediate aftermath, and the number and fame of some of the witnesses he may call to do so could be remarkable. Unfortunately, however, there are 15 witnesses that uh, looks like he won't be able to call now. They're wow. dead. They, they did that during, um, uh, what was that uh, informant's name, Whitey Bolker? They did the same thing. They killed black witnesses and other government agents. And it's so sad because these informants are watching all of this stuff play out. And it's just the same. They're pointing at the television. Oh, do you see that? And they're not looking around them or behind them to see what's coming their way. I mean, that's just sad to see. Because we already know that their daddy already turned on them and... They've been forsaken. The least they can do is open their eyes and look around and, and realize what's going on. Uh, let's see here in a headline, 12160.info, move over jihadist sovereign citizens seen as America's top terrorist threat. Absolutely. I mean, we dealt with, what's his name, uh, Curtis Kallenbach. Uh, that audio is still up on Bonos Entertainment. He's... He's absolutely uh, unpredictable in his actions. Quit claiming people, claiming to be sovereign citizen, giving himself over to the priests and whatever else he's done. And now the, the most recent thing this guy is doing is claiming that uh, the afterbirth is really you and they stole you. They stole your soul or something like that. I mean, it's the craziest stuff I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah, that guy's insane. He is dual-minded. He's the definition of dual-minded right it's, there. He's nuts. I've never seen anything so so uh, out there. You know, of course, sovereign citizen is an oxymoron, a term created by the ACLU, a bunch of attorneys, and uh, oh, yeah. sold by all these agents out there oh. that have some sort of vested interest in it because, of course, all the stuff that Kyle Black promotes, he doesn't do himself, right, by the way. Right, right, and, and it's... You know, a lot of the times what we see is that these informants and agents have stuff held over their head. Possible charges, uh, dropping charges in exchange for informing or teaching something that's promoting something so ridiculous. Who knows? You know, it's the evidence speaks for itself in the end, and, you know, everything will be revealed. Back to Ferguson again. New footage reveals SWAT team shot at reporters after they identified themselves as press. Yeah, I haven't Who directed seen, that? Yeah, and, and it's sad, but I haven't seen verification of this yet. Um, the reporters that had been arrested, it's, it's kind of murky there. Uh, they work for Huffington Post. Um, there was other evidence that... Uh, you know, Al Jazeera has it. Right. That's interesting. Who knows? We'll have to keep up on it. How long ago was uh, it? Let's see here. News footage of the St. Charles County, Missouri uh, SWAT team attacking an Al Jazeera American American news crew in Ferguson further exposed the Sheriff's Department as liars for falsely claiming the SWAT officers were assisting the media when, in fact, they shot at reporters who identified themselves as the press. When? Was this okay. the other day before it came to uh, conclusion? Or? This is uh, tagged today. Wow. Uh, I'll have to look into it. Let's see here. It says, InfoWars reporter Shikari Jackson was standing behind Al Jazeera America and recording this footage of the SWAT team purposely shooting at an obvious news crew who announced their presence. Yeah, does that look like it's footage or does it look like it's a computer generated image? I don't know. When I read InfoWars, I want to stop reading anyways. Right. And it doesn't look like it's 
um, reality, but I'll look into it and find out it. I doubt it, but I can He's another tomorrow. dangerous constitutionalist. Right. It looks like he's trying to pit law enforcement and citizens against each other and promote fear, just like always. Tell you to get an attorney. Yeah. 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 Infowars reporter. There you go. You just stop right there and question reality, question consensus reality. Because and the, uh, the motive. The yeah. motive behind Infowars. Right. They're exposing so much, okay, by what? Pointing their bullhorn at uh, uh, Bilderberg? Bilderberg's nothing more than a think tank for Congress, okay? When you're saying that Bilderberg's the mastermind, you're taking the attention away from Congress, which it's all been about Congress since 1941. And... It's in their own. It's in their own writing. They're they're indicted by their own acts. Absolutely. I mean, Congress means with transgression. I'm not kidding when I tell you this. We found them guilty of genocide, and human trafficking, by their own works and action, by their own writings. Okay. Sad. The Department of Health and Human Services came out of the Office of Population Affairs. What does that tell you? Uh, let's see here. What else is going on? You know, Reuters had a really good blog up earlier. Uh, nice uh, piece. Reuters FYI. Babies, cars, and the cost of divorce. And, you know, the, for the longest time, the mainstream media did not report on the these things. And, um... So often males are just absolutely raised, along with females, because they're buying into this game and they think that they're going to win something. And as the attorneys hold children hostage, houses hostage, retirements hostage, um, you know, in the action of ball or bail, um, everybody's the loser except for these attorneys up until now. And it is so beautiful to see. Reuters and other mainstream media reporting on these things, especially the plight of um, Robin Williams. I mean, that was just a, an awful, awful, awful thing to read the other day and realize his death and um, what caused it. And I know that for years, you know, and you know, my my background is used to be in father's rights. I used to started out in. Um, child advocacy, father's rights, and witnessing the plight of males is has been absolutely, you know, horrifying, terrifying, and, and of course, eye-opening and, and awakening and revealing at the same time, and it's just been horrifying what feminism has caused globally uh, through the actions of Congress and its cohorts co-conspirators and again beautiful story uh, out of Reuters and I, I pray there's more so that we can uh, allow awareness throughout the globe in the protection of humankind rather than the perpetual raising uh, yes yes it's all coming to the surface now you can't escape. There's no escape from the public law. I'm trying to warn y'all now. Uh, if you've got something in your past, it's a violation of public law. It's a good idea to repent now. It's just going to be more painful later. Uh, let's Terrible see. Terrible millstones. You know, there's uh, the weight of past abuses and past harms against humanity is a terrible, terrible millstone. Um, however, there's different degrees. You know, if you've been directed to do something, you know, your director also needs to be held accountable. And, and of course, if you've been directed to do something and you thought that it was for the well-being of mankind and you did something harmful, well, then by all means you didn't have intent to harm and, and um, the, the perpetrator of the harm that knew that it was harmful or knew that the allegations were false or knew that they were fear-mongering you in your ear 
um, those are the folks that need to be held accountable, and they will be held accountable. Yeah, instead, you know who the law merchant likes to hold accountable? Right here, another story to Daily Mail. Stop squishing the effing bread. Mother of two is arrested at the grocery store after cursing at her kids. Arrested for cursing! That didn't harm them. Um, you know, I would never curse at my children, but that was, I always laughed. My, the youngest, she liked squishing bread. Every loaf, every time I went to the store with that child, I would get at home and there'd be this little, you know, hole in the middle of the bread because she'd hugged it. I don't know why it's huggable, but, you know, children like to hug bread, but it's not, um, that, that mother did not uh, harm the child. She said that word. And well, where did the law merchants get off making uh, a speech of any kind illegal? Right. Okay. All right. You get what you ask for, people. You ask for uh, people to govern over you, and this is what you get. You get uh, all these crazy laws that uh, keep you into... Uh, this matrix right, written by crazy people that's insanity yeah I'm, I'm, I'm glad I uh, figured out the public law finally I mean I only adhere to public law you know I could give a rat's monkey about uh, you know any of these uh, six million code statutes regulations codes and procedures etc okay because it's all it's all attorney work product doctrine Okay, it's nothing to do with uh, anything other than crime against the revenue stream under, once again, 27 CFR 72.11. has nothing to do with the well-being or harm to humanity, which is all what the public law is all about. So, you know, that's it. I mean, I adhere to public law. End of story. That's all there is, is the truth. The public law is just basically the truth. Do no harm. Yeah, and lies are contrary to public law, too, for people out there that think lies are harmless. Absolutely. False allegations could cost somebody 20 years. You know, that's what you face if you're making them. And, um, I don't know what where the commercial going, because I don't have very many things open, but I'll find out where it is in just one second. Sorry about that, folks. Got it. Looks like the, I don't know. Family's torn apart by Ebola. Photographer risks his own life to chronicle harrowing scenes in Liberia. Doctors warn disease is out of control. Yeah, and of course CNN is reporting that it's much more widespread than uh, earlier uh, estimates. Ebola crisis vastly underestimated. Yeah, it says it's worse than it was first thought to be, um, I don't know, psychopaths like to hang out together. They, 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 they cannot exist uh, without a host body politic. They like attention. Um, they have the narcissistic tendencies, and so they, they like those ego strokes and pats on the back and stuff. And so the... the um, propensity or the um, potential for massive plague spreading is, is already there. Attorneys, psychopaths, they don't like being uh, separate from groups of people and, and um, it's terrifying for me to think of. Um, however, with the recent reporting out of CDC, again, Ebola doesn't seem to be affecting those with a frontal lobe. Which is interesting. That child that, that was diagnosed, children don't have a fully developed frontal lobe, but that child was seen as better the other day. It was reported as better. So um, this has been very interesting. I like this. The FBI spied on the wrong people because of typos. Government watchdog report finds the agency collected data on people because of errors. Uh, the FBI spied on citizens who were not the subject of investigation because of typographical errors, according to a government watchdog. Yeah, it's ridiculous that anybody would be watching anybody other than attorneys and politicians because those are the public uh, figures. You know, citizens are not to be treated under 
uh, capital processes that's directly contrary to the public law. Alex Perrine says on Twitter today, and I thought it was so profound, quote, as someone else pointed out to me, it appears that Rick Perry has been indicted for being Andrew Cuomo. I thought that one was pretty. I had to get it out there. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, but, yeah, I like seeing more about this, uh, you know, exposure of... Um, the public law, basically, in the mainstream media. Here again, we got the uh, police have charged an 18-year-old Andrew Wheeler with punching, kicking, and tormenting a 16-year-old autistic boy in front of a cheering uh, party goers at Okeechobee, Florida, home, August 8th. Disturbing, disturbing uh, footage here from Facebook. Wow. Uh, you know, harm is harm. Again, you know. Yep. And uh, there is to be accountability and all harmful acts against humanity, and uh, that's what Jesus said as well. Uh, of course, okay, uh, you reported on Robert Durst, and I think so did I a couple weeks back. Um, he uh, is a, you know, a real estate heir, uh, and he appeared in court for urinating on candy at the CVS ten years after he was cleared of killing and dismembering his elderly neighbor. Yeah. And, um, so, um, so he urinated over like a hundred dollars with candy, and this is all a big deal now. Sick. It's just gross. It's psychopathic tendencies. Um, you know, the, the, uh, psychology behind that, you know, urination is, is usually a sign of impotence. Um, instead of, uh, ejaculating, the male urinates. And, and females have done this too, if you go back into the history of like serial killing and serial raping and things like that. That's just creepy. That guy needs to be uh, evaluated for psychopathy. Passenger jet plunged 5,000 feet as pilot slept is being reported out of the New York Post.com. This is uh, earlier this afternoon. And the story is frozen. So if you want to go read that, go over to the New York Post. Um, I don't know why it froze up, but I'm not able to see anything further. Um, these things are just, uh, we, we covered the Amish kidnapping. That was terrible. Uh, our hearts go out to the Amish community, of course, because they don't need to be exposed to all of this crap, which it sounds like this was a ploy of the federal government, once again, having its agents kidnap children and put people into fear and then, you know, where did those agents go? Do we follow through with every one of these cases? Absolutely not. I spent so much time following through on these cases into the appellate courts and you watched these decisions years ago before the accountability came and um, in the media they would be held accountable and sentenced for this or this. Minutes back was turned though in the appellate courts, they were getting off on technicalities, which was a main tactical play of attorneys through the use of lawfare. So we want to really watch this one, folks, and make sure that these individuals are held accountable for this and that those Amish citizens um, are, are simply left alone. They want to be left alone. Leave them alone. Uh, let's see, the 51 year actor um, pictured in court here today waived his right to preliminary hearing earlier this month, meaning that the murder case will proceed to trial without an initial presentation of evidence to a judge. Jace, best known for his role as an LAPD officer in the show The Shield, is accused of shooting his wife, 40 year old April Jace multiple times in the upper torso in their suburban Los Angeles home May 19th. Wait a second, a judge can only see evidence. Right. So the attorneys are already removing the evidence off a of court record, so what you is betcha. he actually being charged for? That's a violation of the public law, of course. Yeah, so the S.H.I.E.L.D. actor Michael J. appears in court and pleads not guilty in wife shootings death. Well, good luck there with that uh, 
system, I mean, but if you are guilty, uh, you're to you be know, held accountable. Yeah, no, yeah, it has nothing to do with luck. You got to be held accountable. You know, this last week, um, there was lots of pictures going around about the Perseids and the supermoon. Um, you know, that was that was beautiful to see all of the pictures of those things. Yeah, and um, that kind of went under the radar there. Um, because it happened the same day as the supermoon, the flyby, um, not last seen since 36 years ago, of ISEE-3, space satellite from the 70s era. And uh, it was actually uh, a group of uh, uh, people that uh, took control over the spacecraft to send it on another mission because I mean that technology is old but it was designed to last and it's still working. Uh, NASA didn't have any funding for it so uh, basically this group put together their own little command station on top of this mountain in, uh, in, in an abandoned McDonald's. The project was called McMoon and um, so it was completely civilian uh, control. It was the first time really a uh, non-governmental body had control of a uh, um, space satellite. Right. And that's just from memory, but uh, these things have been beautiful. You can see. search I S E E like I C dash three, and, and it'll come up. Um, there's probably a wiki page on it. Well, and it's beautiful to see just humanity being humanity. If you want to study something, study it. Um, don't buy into all the, the garbage, you know. If you want to know something, well, get out there and find out more about it. That's what life is all about, experience. Um, Business Insider is reporting Rick Perry's attorney weighed in with an even more aggressive statement. Uh, we probably need to deal with that um, before we run out of time. It's trying to go there, I think. Uh, let's see. It's very interesting, these things. Um, I'm outraged and appalled by the grand jury that the grand jury has taken this action given the governor's constitutional right and duty to veto funding as he deems appropriate. Well, no, not if you're a criminal. You don't have any authority to make any anything. You, you're already evidence to be a criminal. Quote, this clearly represents political abuse of the court system and there is no legal basis in this decision. No, the courts are not supposed to be banks. They're supposed to be courts of law under the public law. And um, there can only be trading in them in regards to a fiction. A fiction. An attorney is a fiction. Uh, the facts of this case, facts again are not evidence, Conclude that the governor's veto was lawful, no, it doesn't, appropriate, no, and well within the authority of the office of the governor. Absolutely not. He has no authority. He's a criminal attempting to uh, remove evidence, which is tampering with the evidence. Uh, I'll continue reading, quote, today's action which violates the separation of powers outlined in this Texas Constitution is nothing more than an effort to weaken the constitutional authority granted to the office of Texas governor and sets a dangerous precedent by allowing a grand jury to punish the exercise of a lawful and constitutional authority afforded to the Texas governor. Again, he's been evidenced to be a criminal tampering with evidence. That is a crime. He doesn't have any authority. Again, that's like asking uh, Charles Manson to investigate himself or to adjudicate his own case. That's insane. It's uh, crazier than a soup sandwich. And again, any attorney caught practicing law, of course, is held accountable under the public law because you are protecting predation of humankind and promoting genocide and human trafficking at the same time that you're protecting these uh, criminal entities. My goodness. Ridiculous on its face. Yeah, you know, and of course they created the law enforcement system that you see today, and you see the police state today, and everybody again, they want to point the finger right at the cops. Well, you know, you got to look at the whole system. The system's controlled by attorneys. Right. Now, here's one over here at the Intel Hub that uh, I found really disturbing. 
Um, 13 cops dispatched to arrest one 15-year-old girl because a cop smelled weed. That one, I saw that earlier. That was foul. She didn't even have uh, marijuana on her. No, she was out in the car charging her cell phone. Right. That was just an absolutely horrifying experience for a child to be terrorized by corporate policy enforcers directed by corporate counsel. Yeah, they didn't have any evidence, but they said they smelled it, and they handcuffed her and drug her away. They handcuffed skin, too tight, cut off for circulation. Uh... Let's see, she was violently dragged from the car where she was charging, you know, on her cell phone right in her own driveway. Um, Sick. You know, and so the officers caused excruciating pain to her arms and wrists, which she said were pulled too forcefully and too far up, and her wrists, which she said were handcuffed too tightly, causing her circulation to be cut off. The 15 year old girl also stated that during the violent and painful arrest, her head was repeatedly pounded against. Uh, into the hood of a parked car outside her sister's house it's when they wrestled horrifying. her to the ground. Horrifying. They're abusing children. And additional officers who arrived on the scene, four participating in the arrest, and 13 officers in total, hogtied her and put her in the back seat of the squad car. Yep. Now it's time to go arrest corporate counsel for directing this. Don't pass go. Don't or you, stop Or you can anywhere. go down with corporal counsel. I don't care. Absolutely. Either way, the, the public law has to be adhered to. Absolutely. Sick. You know, it, Shame on you. If the officers, uh, you know, are adhering to public law, okay, fine. Then good. If you're not, as I said the other night, you're of no use to us here in the United States court, and you need to be held accountable. Absolutely. Deported to that you cannot harm any further human beings. And that's what this is all about. No, no more harm. No more harm. Period. My goodness. Yeah, okay. so she was also uh, denied, uh, to, uh, you know, access to a hospital, and they just um, gave her ice packs and aspirin. Sick. Sick. 15, 15 years old. No, and there was never any urine analysis. Uh, no blood test performed. Okay. Uh, it was just all because they smelled weed. Okay, which isn't a violation of the public law at all anyway. No, it's adhering to private acts and acts of commerce under 27 CFR 72.11. It's sick. There's no immunity for that, no sovereignty or anything. And, and the attorney, again, needs to be held accountable for these things. They're promoting civil war as they're pitting citizens and cops against each other, uh, directing officers to harm our children for crimes against the laws of revenue. Come on, folks, wake up. Here's a uh, question in the headline uh, from RINF. Is corruption a constitutional right? Well, you're doggone tootin' it is. Just read that Commerce Clause in your beloved Constitution. Of course it is. Wall Street is one of the biggest sources of funding for presidential campaigns, and many of the Republican Party's potential 2016 Contenders are governors from Chris Christie of New Jersey and Rick Perry of Texas to Bobby Jindal of Louisiana and Scott Walker of Wisconsin. And so last week the GOP filed a federal lawsuit aimed at overturning the pay-to-play law that bars those governors from raising campaign money from Wall Street executives who manages their state pensions funds. Well, no, that's uh, aiding and abetting the non enemy of humankind. So if you do uh, invest in that kind of behavior, you'll, you'll be held accountable. And, and part of that is under the civil forfeiture laws and the criminal forfeiture laws. It depends on uh, what you have done uh, as to how much you're going to lose by simply aiding and abetting the non enemy of humankind. And that, that can be explained to you in the genocide order itself. It's not going to happen anymore. Scientists detect genetic abnormalities in Fukushima birds and insects. Is um, some of the latest news coming out of Fukushima. The uh, ice walls complete failure, and they've scrapped that whole project now because uh, you can't freeze radioactive water. And it's not just that; it's it's wasting treasury funds. They already knew that that wouldn't work. 
uh, you know, applying something that's garbage in the first place and funding something like that. It's just ridiculous on the face, folks. Stop, stop patronizing that thing. It, it just leads to hell um, and, and more misery. All it creates is misery, absolute misery. Yes. Yeah, but that is a very... Uh... That report earlier today was interesting as well um, on New York taxi drivers. Um, there's a, a good portion now of New York, New York taxi drivers are former attorneys and doctors and uh, things like that. It looks like they've been falling on hard times and, and taking other jobs outside of the former profession, which is interesting to see. Yeah, well, it couldn't happen to a bunch of nicer folks. Of course, I'm being facetious. Uh, so... Alright, well, we've got, uh, of course, um, you know, getting back to uh, that two charged over the body in the suitcase deal. That was disgusting. Absolutely disgusting, and... Uh, Psychopathy. Do you have that one pulled out? Uh, let's see here, well, from over at uh, That's definitely CNN, a, a threat to humankind. Yeah. Let's see here. The uh, Americans charged in the death of a woman found in suitcase in Indonesia. The two Americans have been charged with murder in the death of a woman whose body was found this week in a suitcase outside the Indonesian hotel. Police in the Indonesian province of Bali said Friday. Heather Mack, 19, and Tommy Schaefer, 21, both of the Chicago area. Have been charged with murder and the death of Mac's mother. Sheila Von Weiss Mac said Colonel Dejoko Hari Utomo, Utomo, Bali's chief of police. Authorities say the badly beaten body of Sheila Mac, 61, was wrapped in a blood stained bed sheet and placed in a large, hard sided suitcase. They say the young couple put the suitcase in the trunk of a taxi outside Indonesia's St. Rally's. Uh, St. Regis Valley Resort on Tuesday and went back into the hotel telling the cab driver they would be back. After a lengthy wait, the cab driver noticed blood and con contacted the police. Authorities at the South Kuta Station in Bali opened the case and found the body. Heather Mack and Schaefer were arrested after being found Wednesday morning at another hotel about 15 kilometers from St. Regis. And... Um, yeah, this is absolutely uh, disgusting. They reportedly, uh, in another story I read somewhere, reportedly had sex afterwards before they were arrested. You know, so this is evidence of a psychopathic mindset. Not people in the mindset you would expect that uh, are adhering to the public law by any means. And, uh, yeah, they need to be held accountable. That's all there is to it. End of story. So, yeah, the Star Trek gal's name was Arlene Martell. She's the one who played Spock's fiance. She died earlier, uh, let's see, today, I believe it was. That was so sad to see. Uh, she played Dupring. Leonard Nimoy at the real Nimoy on Twitter saying goodbye to Pring. Arlene Martell, a lovely talent. Let's see. Uh, now she had done a lot of work too. Um, her career began on Broadway when she was a teenager. She was cast at Esther in the 1956 production of Uncle Willie. She was still using her birth name. Arlene Sachs for the credits then. Her television career started in 1959 with the movie, uh, with the move to Hollywood. She soon landed guest roles on hit shows including Twilight Zone, Death Valley Days, and Have Gun Will Travel. Well, 
with roles slowed down over the decades. Martell always considered herself a working actress. She was still getting out there, doing roles. Catherine said she had a lot of big dreams she was still pursuing. And although battling cancer over the past five years, she still traveled around the world to conventions where Star Trek fans gathered. Her son said it was an odd experience for him to go with her because guys would have a crush on your mom because she's a sci-fi babe from the 60s. Aw, that's adorable. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. But, uh, yeah, so she's another one. Um, she was uh, 78. And she uh, died um, from complications of a heart attack. Um, her heart squats is handy. Yes, indeed. And whatever you think about Star Trek, I mean, there were some interesting concepts, to say the least, that they were innovative for the time. Well, the um, but it was a pu was a push for the UN. The whole uh, the United Federation of Planets symbol is the United Nations right. flag and symbol. The League of Nations. Yeah. And um, it, it's interesting yeah. now to look back and, and see these things and, and uh, learn these things, you know. And, and it, it's still, I'm still processing because it was right there in front of our eyes for the longest time. And, you know, it took us a long time to realize. Yeah, yeah. Just like the Star Wars universe, uh, they're still adhering to private acts and acts of commerce. Um, can be seen clearly in the episode entitled A Piece of the Action. Right. Where they go to a gangster planet. Interesting. And the end result is that they get this treaty, you know, basically as posing as uh, uh, bigger mobsters than the mobsters that ran the planet. Yeah, the same mobsters shaking each other's hands like the colonies and the, the mobsters of the United States Incorporated, the United States of America. It's always been a confederated state, course, of a course. It's, of course, the, the definition of style, chain of events, of a course. Of course, they're trying to kick things back up in Iraq. No, there won't be any boots in the ground. They sent 130... Uh, Advisors to Iraq, I think earlier this week or late last week. I hope they're okay. They keep killing their upper levels of management here. We've been watching a lot of that stuff. And, you know, one of the most horrifying was the MH17 just recently. How many advisors and, and upper levels are there? You know, you had, uh, man, it was just foul watching that. And then the. All of the other wars and stuff that they've put on to cover up their dirty deeds. And of course, everybody's kept busy, and, and uh, it's horrifying what they do to each other. You know, I remember years ago, uh, prior to 2010, they had whacked over 200 bioethicists before they brought out this new uh, swine flu garbage. And um, it, it's horrifying what the federal government does to itself and each other. They have no, absolutely no empathy and no compassion for others. If, and if somebody's a threat to their business model and business, why? Well, they just fall out of the sky and everything else that's occurred. I mean, it's sick. The reports on the ground from MH17 said so that those bodies were already dead prior to the plague coming down. They were already in rigor mortis, um, already decomposing, and, and um, just nasty. They have nasty, nasty, nasty ethics. Nasty ethics. Yeah. And, of course, that whole investigation was uh, boo-fooed by... Uh, themselves and each other. Yeah. You know, that's what you get when you have the criminal investigating itself. A whole bunch of presentations, shows, and now we've got uh, Ukraine blowing up a whole bunch of uh, shipping from Russia and all of this presentation going on when they've been prostrating the Trojan horse for a long time and, and creating that concept in the mind of, of all of humanity. But 
the folks that are hurting are the citizens of Ukraine, of Kiev, of Russia. And as these government actors, you know, basically put on the show, there's people, human beings, going hungry and homeless, being kicked out of their homes because of these, uh, pardon my French, asshats in control that need to be stopped. This is ridiculous. Um, let's see, and, and then rather, you know, then they just, just, just let go of all the laws. They're still trying to hold on to the law and steer the reins here. Colombia set to legalize medical marijuana as president attacks ineffective drug war. Oh, yeah, I guess this isn't working now. Uh, too many uh, people here uh, breathe down my back. I guess we'll have to make it legalized, but it's right. going to cost you. Right, which means the taxation. And, and, and the same thing with... They don't have authority to tax anything that comes out of the ground. They have no access or right or authority to the ground itself. They've never, ever evidenced any standing whatsoever. And uh, fiction cannot bring forth a case against a reality. Fictitious plaintiff. It's a contempt of court to be a fictitious plaintiff. And, you know, in a plant that grows in the ground, it's just, it's, it's the same as this, this this water business, and of course we've got a serious water business crisis in uh, uh, Detroit. Now the Obama administration is urged to declare public health emergency in Detroit. Well, well, it was the administration that caused the problem in the first place. Absolutely. Uh, today, a coalition of over 50 social justice organizations, including Food and Water Watch, urged President Obama and Health and Human Services Secretary Sylvia Burwell to declare the ongoing water crisis in Detroit a public health emergency. Yeah, well, it was flooding this week. What happened to the massive flooding this week? Yeah. All of that water was collected by the local administration, and then it's selling human beings' water back to themselves. And that is absolutely, uh, on its face, a violation of the public law. They're choking out humanity, squeezing humanity. That's not under the public law. That's under acts of commerce and private acts, and they should be held accountable for these things immediately. Immediately. Do not pass go. Do not collect your two hundred dollars. Just go to a jail, get mo, wherever there's room for these monsters. Well, if we clear out all the prisons of all these, you know, victimless uh, crimes, people are being. In prison, there's plenty of room. Absolutely. Plenty of room. Did you hear that, law enforcement? There's plenty of room for these criminal actors, co-conspirators. Have at it. Well, it's, yeah, it's incredible how many people are incarcerated and how much room they have in there. But, again, the majority of the people are being held because of uh, a commercial crime. Nothing to do with harm against humanity. Absolutely, until now. Rick Perry was indicted today. That was so nice to see. Yeah, he's, he's looking at 5 to 99 years. Yeah, that's only for tampering with the evidence. What evidence? Because we have evidence that he's complicit in the child sex trafficking and female trafficking industry from, from the get-go. So... We want to follow this one, folks, because uh, delving into his past and looking in his closet, you're just going to find very, very, very many, many, many skeletons. Many skeletons that, that, that uh, he was traded as general counsel in the Department of Health and Human Services. His, uh, evidence of his works are in the National Security Act itself and the Memorandum 200 to the National Security Council from uh, Kissinger, and then of course his own works. You know, we covered that House case years ago. Uh, one of the reasons that Nancy Schaefer was murdered in the first place is because we had given the evidence of the House case over to somebody else, assuming that they were going to run with it and present it to the media. And all of a sudden, Nancy's dead, and then Bill is dead, and then Jeff is dead. Back to back within that, uh, what, four months, five months? And um, it was horrifying, horrifying to uh, live through those things and, and realize out the other side how dastardly 
Rick Perry is and, and his cronies are. Absolutely deplorable, disgusting, abhorrent to God. Well, I'll see here, just uh, some other headlines here. Um, got time for some quick ones, I guess, uh, just to show you that there's accountability kicking in out there. Uh, let's see here, registered sex offender accused of trying to meet for sex. This is a KDVR out of Denver, uh, Colorado, and uh, that was a cop, actually, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Indy Channel. Uh, Minneapolis, Indiana, uh, two deputies fired from Marion County Jail. There were two female deputies, by the way. Um, not disclosing the nature of their charges yet. Teacher admits to having sex with special ed student, also um, headlined in one. Indie Channel. I saw that one. Absolutely filthy. Shame on you. Filthy. Uh, let's see. Camera found in Michigan Bank restroom. The manager has been charged and jailed. Deplorable. Sick. Twisted. Psychopaths. Nasty. Uh, let's see. There's uh, a Chicago ATM technician dresses in burka and walks out uh, into the waiting arms of the FBI and trying, <coughs> trying to get away with an elaborate... Uh, uh, theft scheme. He had gone there as a as a bank employee. Wow, wow! Undercutting the the federal, state, the national, state, federal. Ugh, that's not a good idea. He that, just always kings himself. Of course, that uh, federal judge uh, that was arrested uh, for assaulting his wife. Um, let's see here. What was his name? Muller? Fuller? Um, I think so. Something like that. I saw it earlier come across my desk. And, but he's um, still getting his $200,000 a year salary. He's on paid leave. Saw that for now. Um, it was interesting to see that he's still being paid after uh, going through these types of things. And, and um, it's just, yeah, these things are foul. You know, when we first started out in these things, um, I never imagined we would find just so much filthy, dirty, disgusting um, things in these closets. You know, at first you realize, oh, they're really bad. Well, then, you know, then you tell yourself, well, it can't get worse than that. That's just deplorable. You know, uh, Keith Barnum comes along and says he likes really young children and, and um, things of that nature. And it keeps getting worse and worse. They're just sick. Absolutely, uh, without a doubt, horrifying. Um, I can't find that judge's it's Fuller. One. It is Fuller. It is Fuller. That's his last name, yeah. Mark, uh, I, think, I think it's Mark Fuller. But, uh, and also, uh, Chicago Tribune had a uh, attorney being investigated, Bo Brimley. Uh, actually, he was charged after an investigation. Yeah, attorney sentenced to six years in prison for sexual assault. And, uh, let's see, a real estate attorney at that, who allegedly tried to destroy evidence by rubbing lip balm on his hands after sexually assaulting a young woman inside of Gold Coast Hotel in 2012. Yeah, that one was creepy. Sentenced to six years in prison. He should have gotten more time just for being creepy. Not only, you know, he... he he raped somebody and, and assaulted them, then tampering with the evidence and on top of that, he's just a threat. He should not be uh, released upon humanity ever. Yeah, this is the wow. same kind of, these are the people that are writing the policy for the cops to enforce. Right, sick, sick, twisted. Uh, we're about out of time. Do you have any closing words? Well, like I said earlier, now would be the time to repent. There's no going back from here. Absolutely not. Those are the grim facts, and we'll take everybody out with Alice Cooper.